Oh, come on, baby. Let's look alive now, people. Let's look alive now. This is J-Rock. And J-Rock is here to react to Film Comics Explained. Today, we're going to take a look into the new Terminator from Terminator Dark Fate. The Rev-9 Terminator. Come on and check out exactly what this is all about. If you smell... What J-Rock is cooking. Finally, J-Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in nin 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 with the millions <laughs> of J-Rock's fans, baby? You are here with J-Rock, and we are about to react to Film Comics Explained. Today we're going to check out the Rev-9 Terminator from Terminator Dark Fate. Let's check out and see how this gets broken down. This was indeed the baddest Terminator of all time. I would say that. The Terminator, not the movie. Yeah, that was hot right there. That was tight. I remember when I first saw that in the uh the uh trailer. I was like, hey what? guys, what's happening? Nia huh? here with Film Comics Explained. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Rev-9 Terminator, featured in Terminator Dark Fate, which was portrayed by the talented Gabriel Luna. It's a waking dream that I'm, that I'm still living out, so uh, don't pinch me. <laughs> this is one thing that I always like to include, is, is the way they describe him. He's the latest advancement in anti-personnel technology. Which just sounds so like clinical and objective that it's just it's just nasty. Created by Legion in an alternate timeline after the destruction of Skynet by the Connors, the Rev-9 was an extremely powerful and highly advanced Terminator that was an offshoot of the Rev-7 line of android assassins used by the AI in the future wars. Oh. The Rev-9 had a traditional solid carbon-based endoskeleton, similar to most of the Terminators in the series, but it also had a mimetic poly-alloy outer sheath, much like the T-1000 from Judgment Day and the TX from Rise of the Machines, which could be used to take the form of any human it touched. While the TX had an arsenal of inbuilt weapons at its disposal, the Rev-9 didn't have this luxury and could only use its liquid metal form to create stabbing weapons that were more elaborate compared to those mm. conjured by the T-1000. But what set it apart from every other battle unit was its ability to detach its solid and liquid components to form two separate and fully autonomous units. It should also be noted that its endoskeleton was far more durable than that of the T-800, as in the film it survives through explosions and other forms of severe damage that would have greatly crippled the endoskeleton of the T-800s, let alone destroyed them. As well as being more durable, its frame was far more flexible with more pivot points, enabling it to bend and rotate in an inhuman manner. In the brief glimpse of the post-apocalyptic future we see that awaited Grace and the remainder of humans that would survive the robotic uprising, we get a look at the Rev-7s, which were more beast-like in nature to their Rev-9 successors, possessing tentacles that acted as their primary weapon. The ability to split in two was present in the earlier models, but the Rev-7s lacked the humanoid exterior of the later units that followed, which led to both the poly-alloy version and the carbon versions looking exactly the same, whereas the Rev-9's liquid form could be used to resemble that of a human. The separation does however come at a slight cost by weakening both units, which could not take the same level of punishment when they were apart. Though I should point out that this disadvantage is negligible, compared to the edge gained by having two considerably powerful and unique units pursuing the same goal. As mentioned earlier, much like the T-1000 created by Skynet, the Rev-9 is capable of shape-shifting to assume the appearance of its victims, as well as being able to morph its arms to form stabbing weapons and hooks for scaling vertical surfaces. The mimetic poly-alloy outer sheath, which is more resistant to weapons fire than its endoskeleton, also gave the Rev-9 regenerative capabilities, allowing the Terminator to recover from virtually any type of damage inflicted upon it. In addition to this, the Rev-9 exhibits much more control over its composition than the T-1000, with the assassin seen using its poly-alloy in more inventive and adaptive ways, like when it was able to create multiple stabbing weapons to mm. overcome the numerous Border Patrol officers who decided to hug it instead of shooting it. 
While all of Skynet's Terminators were effective in their own way, the infiltration capabilities of the Rev-9 were unparalleled, with the exception of the T-3000, which I covered in another video a few weeks ago. This is due to its unassuming default appearance as the charismatic Gabriel Luna, and its ability to successfully exhibit human behaviour in ways that were completely unlike any other Terminator. Uh, but when I'm engaged with humans, it's very friendly, it's very seamless, it's, he, he uses everything at his disposal, including his knowledge of human behavior, and tries to develop a human simulation that's a little more uh, approachable. Every other infiltrator unit may have looked human, but their behavior was mechanical and lacked the emotional range of human beings. But when it came to the Rev-9, we see it making jokes, like when it bragged to an officer that its entire body was a weapon as it walked through a metal detector, cleverly hinting at its true nature and composition in a way that avoided suspicion. We see it using profanity to accurately portray how the person it had taken the appearance of would have behaved in the situation they were in, and when it encounters police officers in Texas, it adapts by using a sudden accent. But I think what makes the Rev-9 stand out even further was the smile it frequently displayed when chasing Danny, indicating that it may have actually enjoyed the cat and mouse pursuit of its prey like a predator. It even tells Danny that she should run away when she decided to stand and fight it, as well as attempting to manipulate the group to surrendering Danny. To me, these actions and its characteristics in general suggest that the Rev-9 was self-aware, highly intelligent, and that it understood humanity in a way that no other Terminator had, thus leading to the arrogant and sadistic personality it chose to adopt. This is the only explanation I can think of for why it took pleasure in driving its prey into despair before killing them, and even deliberately prolonging its mission so that it could continue to terrorize its targets for longer. Something unheard of from the cold, calculating machines of old. That is not your father. While the Rev-9 is clearly one of the most advanced Terminator units seen in the franchise, I still think that the T-3000 has it beat in terms of durability and uniqueness, given that it was created by infecting an actual human being with phase matter particles, allowing it to retain the behavioural traits of humans while still possessing a nearly indestructible body. I actually have some videos covering a few of the Terminators in this series, from the T-800, T-1000, T-3000 to the TX, as well as one covering Skynet itself. So, if you're keen to check them out, I'll be leaving a link to my Terminator playlist below. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore the Rev-9 featured in Terminator Dark Fate. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Who's locking your weapon? Expect a big ping, brother. The whole body's a weapon. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, I'm about to flash all y'all. The Terminator ever created. <laughs> how they break that down and they be explaining stuff uh check out his channel film comics explain i'll leave the link to it down below he has a lot of good videos not just for terminators but a whole lot of different things that they explain and go into detail about which is uh i find personally very interesting and intriguing and, and enjoyable personally so you guys may like it as well the link to it will be down below so you can check it out um but yeah i like um i like that movie dark fate um it, it wasn't better than T2, Terminator Judgment Day. I don't think there ever will be, unless they come out with something else. But um, the movie, Dark Fate, yeah, it had a lot of holes in it, you know, storyline-wise. And uh, But I think overall, it still was a very well-done, good movie for the action and, you know, the whole purpose of the Terminator, right? It was just basically an upgraded version of the first Terminator movie, in my opinion. But still not better than T2. But, uh, yeah, if you appreciate it and enjoy J-Rock's reaction, post your comments down below. Let J-Rock know what you thought, all right? Uh, hit that like button, subscribe. J-Rock's trying to get to a million subscribers, and he needs your help. Can't do it without you. For those who have subscribed, thank you for joining J-Rock on his journey to one million subscribers. Uh, you can let everybody know you was at ground zero, baby, uh, when it all started. And J-Rock, appreciate you being with him. Again, once I get to a uh, 100 subscribers, 
I'm going to start doing a uh, frequent giveaway on my channel. The winners will be announced on my Facebook fan page, which the link to it will be down below. So uh, make sure you're following that. Um, put your request there as well. If I choose your video, I'll give you a shout out on the People's Channel. All right? And hit that bell so that you can be notified that it's time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J Rock. Until we meet again. If you're some what J Rock is.